and um, thank you everyone. It's a privilege to be here. So today I'm going to talk about the design process for large scale interventions. Um, but before I get into that, I want to introduce SOM because not everybody knows who SOM is. Skidmore, Owings and Merrill. We've completed over 10,000 projects worldwide in over 50 countries. And SOM first started in 1936 in Chicago. Um, the office in New York started shortly after that in 1937. And that's where I'm coming from. I'm based in New York. And SOM for the longest, since the 1970s, has been known for innovating, not just in architectural design, but also in creating their own tool sets, creating technologies which would help imp implement, but also facilitate design thinking at a higher level. This is one version of a CAD system that SOM developed back in the 1970s, um, a proprietary system that was then sold off. These are the kinds of machines that we were working with back then. So technology has transformed quite a bit since then. Out of the 15 tallest structures in the world, SOM has completed seven, with Burj Khalifa being the tallest. And many of the tall structures that we designed come with very complex articulations. But the complexity is not always just haphazard. There's a lot of intentionality behind each one of the buildings that we design. And that intentionality comes from performance, from culture, from high degrees of integration for sustainability, and also for structural engineering. Because our firm is not just an architectural firm, but also an engineering practice. We're one of the few true A&E firms in the world. In New York, we have what's called the Digital Design Group, SOM DDG, and I'm leading the computational efforts at DDG. So a lot of the things that we do is try and take technology, take agendas of performance, of sustainability, of cultural integration, and push that into the way that we develop tools, but also the way that we design. We have various sectors or various clusters in our group. We focus on environmental, high performance design, computational design, BIM, visualization, and real. The way that we're structured is we have our own team, which is very, very focused on future design and computational thinking, but also we try to generate a center of gravity for, so that the projects that we're getting are also being integrated with that kind of design thinking. And the project management also has a, part to, a role to play in that. So research at our firm is extremely important. Research means that we don't just read literature, we document it, we don't just survey what's existing, but we also try and take that and make it actionable, which means we take the work and we apply it to projects. And that's extremely important for sustaining the research efforts that we have at SOM. So research, it's not just, it's not just a thing, a task that you do, it's not just an activity, but it's also a platform. It's a framework for being able to experiment and experiment within the context of projects that we deliver. The first project I'm going to present to you guys today is a project in Guiyang. It's called the Future Arc. This image captures a cultural identity of the, of the region of Guiyang. It's cultural integration, a village setting on a hillside, but also agricultural activities. And we wanted to try and capture this in the new development that we were working on. This is the site in Guiyang. To the, to the west, we have the Nanjing River, and to the east, we have these mountains which slope very drastically into our site. A big part of this project was also looking at geotechnical, so investigating the topography for optimal locations for the village, but also for the feature tower that we're going to demonstrate today. This is the master plan, just to give you an indication of how big it is. You can see the landmark tower right in the middle. This is a section through the site, the landmark tower on the left, and the housing Soho apartment buildings on the right. You can see the degree of excavation that's required for this kind of integration. And these are the kind of urban experiences that we wanted to create. On the right, you have a meandering path that is adjacent to the river. And then on the left, you have the sloping hills that go into the retail spaces and the housing development. This is the ground of the Future Arc Tower. And this is the scale of the project. A lot of cultural integration, social integration, a lot of circulation, movement. Very complex project. And we actually took the lead on developing this entire master plan. But the real challenge was 
the landmark tower. Of course, every tower comes with its own parameters, and one of the biggest parameters for towers is circulation. How do you get through the building? But also, how do you structurally support a massive structure of this scale? So investigating the core is extremely important, looking at the number of cabs and making sure that you can service the programmatic elements as you move vertically through the building. And like any tower, this one comes equipped with a highly integrated crown, with a helicopter pad, a BMU, and also maintenance support systems. The way that we designed the project, just from a geometric perspective, is we established a design geometry, and then we distill that information, that design geometry, into points in space to generate locations for structural nodes, and then we start to subdivide that surface so that we can begin to automate enclosure systems. And what you see is, you see how we started to divide the slabs, you see how we use level planes to divide that surface geometry, and we use, of course, we use various tools, but in this case, we're using a multi-scripting technique to generate all that information. From a structural perspective, we have in-house engineering, and so the integration of that process is very, very flexible. We can be working on a design geometry, and then our engineering team will come to us and take that design geometry and look at various iterations of how we can develop structural flows and structural components. And so what you see here is you see, uh, you see a tube-in-tube -tube system where you have a, a concrete-reinforced exterior envelope that is projected outward to maximize the floor efficiency, and then you have a core, and the floor system is made up of a composite floor framing system with steel beams that span back to the core. This is what that looks like in section. And these are some of the analytical processes that we use to look at de deflections and deviations. And of course, CFD. You can't complete a tower without doing CFD. And the form has a, a big role to play in that. So this project, of course, it's large, 380 meters tall, but the complexity comes down to the enclosure system. In this case, we had to clad the concrete structure with over 30,000 aluminum panels. Some of these mega panels range in size from up to 3.2 meters in height to over 6 meters in height. Part of that investigation was also looking at different materials, different subdivision techniques, trying to optimize the fabrication of them, but ultimately we came down to a coated aluminum. And this is what that looks like in one iteration. So we do a lot of iterative thinking in our design process. And these are some of the panels fabricated right now. And we'll see this building built in the next few years. The next project I want to talk about takes us to Hangzhou, China, another project that is highly intentional in terms of its cultural relevance. Um, it's situated right next to the West Lake in Hangzhou, a very beautiful lake um, dating, with stories dating back dynasties. And with many cultural icons situated along the lake and giving us a lot of feedback for how we can start to design our project. So our project wanted to find an integration with not just the cultural identity of Hangzhou, China, but also with the fluidity of the natural landscape in the area. And so this is, a this is what the tower looks like. A big part of that was also looking at how we can not just create a gateway for the, for the city, 
but also create um, an integration in the urban landscape. This is at the podium level. So you can see here that there's a lot of interaction with the public realm. We designed the landscape to create spaces for meandering, but also spaces for creating social interaction. The user experience is also key to this tower. The entry lobby was highly crafted. The design was meant to be made out of ivory, ivory stone, marble stone. And this is the floor plan at the, at the ground level. So again, circulation is a big driver in the way that we design projects. Vertical circulation drives some of the basis for how we begin this process. Looking at how you analyze these kinds of intentional, this, these kinds of complex intentions is a big part of our design process. So being able to discretize design geometries, look at the structural support elements, and also quantifying that and being able to describe that for contractors and developers. A part of the project was also to maintain the design language continuously throughout the project because it's not just about a single building, but it's also about every element in that in that um, experience of the, of the spaces. So these are all key design elements situated throughout the project for signage and wayfinding. Conceptually, the mass begins with a simple extrusion to maximize the floor area. And then we begin to hybridize the system with a series of operations that start to create additional structural integration. And then looking at how we can start to shape that geometry for wind, for, for lateral forces, and also for floor, pit, floor plate optimization, and looking at the interaction with the surrounding environment, like solar exposure. The way that we break down the tower is to first take that design geometry, then break it down into its most basic elements, the most basic drivers, in this case, straight lines and a series of curves. And then we take those to distill that geometry and start to subdivide that for automating the enclosure systems. The tower is 288 meters tall. And a way of keeping track of the floor efficiency areas is by coming up with tools that can automate the section cuts throughout the building as we're generating different iterations and measuring that for core efficiency and least span ratios. And so once we start to subdivide the basic geometries, we can then extract these discrete surfaces to automate enclosure systems looking at optimizing not just the, the glazing panels, but also the interface with the surrounding columns. In this case, the system is made up of three primary components. You have the current wall system, you have the cladding around the eight mega columns, and then you also have the horizontal fins. In section, the system is highly integrated. It includes um, an air filtration system so that you can feed mechanical systems, but you can also um, bring air into the building. In terms of structure, we looked at different iterations of how we can automate the eight mega columns. The eight mega columns are made up of CFT technology or concrete field steel tubes, and they range in size. So as you're moving up the building, the concrete, the concrete varies. In this case, our structural team came up with a very innovative solution where we were able to create these merging points for the structure to first delineate the overall form, but then also to make sure that we have um, equal spacing between the bays. And so what you see here is you see eight mega columns followed by secondary CFT columns, varying in size all the way through. So this is the project from above, and this is what we hope it looks like once, once it's built. So I just want to leave off with, thank you for your time. There was a lot more to share, but given the short amount of time we have, this, I think, captures what SOM is about, high integration and investing meaning into the architecture that we do. Mm -hmm.